pretty good. It makes ugly people attractive, and makes you think that you can take on the greatest fighters on Earth, even though a strong breeze would probably blow you to pieces. Now, we're not going to say that alcohol is all fun and games. Sometimes it can cause real problems in a person's life, and we're not about to ridicule that. But we've decided to look back through history and pick 10 of our favorite moments throughout that were fueled by alcohol. Some of them completely changed the way history played out. Others are just funny. Welcome to the 10 most bizarre drunk moments throughout history. Number 1. Ancient Greece We've decided to start at the very beginning. The Greeks were some of the first people to actually record their history, but what they're most famous for is their art and literature. From their gods to their epic plays, the Greeks were some of the most sophisticated people of their time. Equally, the ancient Greeks are known for their love of wine. So what happens when you mix alcohol and art? Well, apparently, you get a lot of stone-carved penises, and those stone dicks get stolen. Hermes statues were known for their mighty dongs. However, in 415 BC, Athens suffered an alcohol-fueled mass castration of their beloved statues, many of which had their stone serpents removed. This senseless act of mischief proves that though thousands of years and countless generations separate us, our ancestors are just as immature as we are. Number 2. Costa Concordia Back in 2012, the 114,000 ton ship, the Costa Concordia, crashed into a mass of rocks off the Italian coast. The captain, Francesco Chettino, was allegedly wasted the whole time. Apparently quite the show off, a series of drunken miscalculations after drinking red wine with a beautiful woman led to this tragic event. Francesco Chettino is currently serving a 16 year prison sentence for both crashing the ship, manslaughter, and abandoning his passengers. While not Titanic famous, the Costa Concordia was a fairly famous ship even before its sinking. It was the setting for part of the movie film Socialism and was a figure of pop culture. Since the sinking, the ship's wreckage has still appeared in Italian movies such as The Great Beauty. The moral of the story, don't drink and drive, or skipper in this case. Number 3. The Death of Princess Diana Speaking of not drinking and driving, the death of Princess Di is the most high-profile death of royalty in modern history. While in France, Diana and her driver Henry Paul were speeding double the limit while trying to escape paparazzi. Aside from doing 60 in a 30 mile per hour zone, Paul was also approximately three times over the limit for alcohol consumption. After the pair died in the car crash, the public reaction ranged from mourning the loss of the most popular princess to claiming that she was killed intentionally by the royal family due to her controversial behavior. While there's no proof that Diana's death was intentionally orchestrated, the anti-royal sentiment in the UK is so great that to this day many just accept it as fact. Number 4. Andre the Giant Gets Drunk and Attacks People If you're in the slightest bit interested in professional wrestling, there is no doubt that you know Andre the Giant. Frequently billed as the largest wrestler of all time, although this is not an accurate statement, he was famous for three things. Being big, getting slammed by Hulk Hogan at Wrestlemania, and drunkenly beating the shit out of people when he got bored. Apart from punching Ultimate Warrior in the face, Andre the Giant also got drunk and began to start a real fight during a match with Akira Maeda in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Maeda, who was also a legitimate fighter, was known for attacking his co-performers in the ring just for fun, and as a result, NJPW asked Andre the Giant to teach him a lesson. The trouble was that drunk Andre the Giant didn't really have much for Akira Maeda, leaving the whole thing an ugly, drunken mess. Number 5. Writing Cujo Stephen King is generally considered to be the greatest horror writer of the modern age, with dozens of classics within the genre such as It, The Shining, and The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. That being said, Stephen King has also had numerous books outside of the conventional horror genre, such as his magnum opus The Dark Tower, The Shawshank Redemption, and Cujo. While Cujo is technically a horror novel, it's very different in tone and style with it being a very realistic scenario. What may surprise you about the classic book of a beloved Saint Bernard infected with is that Stephen King barely remembers writing it. He wrote the book during a point in his life when he was drinking heavily and as a result can't really recollect much of the creative process. He's pretty sad about this because he says he wishes he could remember enjoying the good parts as he wrote them. Number 6. Joe McCarthy was pretty much always drunk. We've talked about Joe McCarthy before on this channel and about the effect that his red scare had on pop culture and the movie industry. What you might not have known about McCarthy was that he was an alcoholic. While most will know about the widespread paranoia he caused during the Cold War, far fewer know of the vices that in part caused the senator's raging paranoia. The man's drinking, combined with his already volatile nature, no doubt played a big part of the persecution of innocent people during his run as senator of Wisconsin. When McCarthy died in the late 50s, the official cause of death was hepatitis, but most now accept that it's due to his alcoholism that his liver inflamed and caused his death. Number 7. George Washington, Delaware 
The war of American independence is subject to a lot of myths. Schools tend to talk a lot about the end result, but very little of things such as the French carrying most of the war on their beret wearing shoulders. This story, however, is one that we're disappointed doesn't make it into the history books. On Boxing Day of 1776, after the Battle of Trenton, the Americans captured many kegs of alcohol. Thus began one of the oldest keggers in US history, as Washington's men began to celebrate both the victory and Christmas chugging booze. The celebration was a sight to behold by all accounts with half-naked soldiers stumbling all around the place. We're not completely sure if this is a great story or not, because on one hand, it must have been pretty funny for American troops. But on the other hand, the idea of being a German prisoner being subjected to this most unusual form of torture doesn't exactly seem nigh on unbearable. Number 8. Drunk referee doesn't give a shit. Here's one for our sports fans. The Czech Republic quite liked their soccer, known as football in the rest of the world, and really quite liked their alcohol. Which is great, because during a game between Yestrabi Lohota and Tinec nad Labem, referee Tomas Fidra rolled up absolutely wankered. He was so drunk that he just decided to red card three footballers who asked him if he was still able to referee the match while drunk. While he was allowed to do it, as nowhere in the rules states that he wasn't allowed to show up drunk and keep people out of the game for no reason, the match was annulled soon after. Number 9. Alien Sightings Since the famous UFO crash in Roswell, people have been obsessed with the idea of aliens crashing on Earth. Unfortunately for believers, the chances of aliens landing on Earth are pretty slim. In fact, the National UFO Reporting Center has received approximately 90,000 calls reporting sightings of UFOs over the last 40 years. This works out as roughly 6 per day, and nearly all the time it occurs during drinking hours which means there's a good chance that most UFO sightings happen after someone stumbles out of a bar and sees a plane flying overhead. This shouldn't come as any real surprise though, given the common stereotype of crazy drunkards believing in UFO sightings. Number 10. Eating your underwear Generally, when the police pull you over, there's usually a pretty good reason. Drunk driving is a very dangerous crime, and the more you drink, the more dangerous it is. At least, until you get so paralytic that you can't put your foot on the pedal. So, how drunk does a man need to be in order to eat his own underwear in the hopes of passing a breathalyzer test? Apparently quite, because that's what one young man did in hopes that the cotton fibers would soak up the alcohol to enable him to pass the test and avoid being placed under arrest. The most amazing thing was that the guy was actually under the limit to drive. But if he had drunk enough that he thought that this was a good idea, then we can only assume one thing. It must work. Do you have any drunk news stories or alcohol-fueled historical events that you want to share? Leave a comment and let us know. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and check out the rest of our channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to CBR for cool vids about movies, action heroes, gaming, comics, and more.